Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Co-Opticast. This is episode 81, February 15th, 2012. I'm your host for this one, Jason Love. And joining me are three guys I met in the TGI Fridays bar. That starts off with... This is Locke. Oh, hey, this is Nick. And in the third seat we have... Oh, that's right. Yeah, Mike couldn't join us this time. So all you faithful listeners out there, I'm sure you're very disappointed. <laughs> he is uh, tending to other things at the moment, so won't be able to join us for this week, but he'll be back soon enough. Um, as usual, we'll get things started with what you've been playing. And so, Locke, get us started. What have you been playing? Uh, a couple things for review. Um, first thing I'll get out of the way, because I don't have much to say about it yet, is Shank 2. Um, playing that on the Xbox 360, um, and it is it is more Shank, uh, surprisingly enough. <laughs> uh, it's is it it's more really or less <laughs> Shank than in a prison? More uh, or less? More sh- more Shank than in the prison, but no, I really I really enjoyed the first one. I thought the art style was really cool. I like the the over the top gore, um, you know, that caters to me, and the. What they did with Shank 2 is, again, continuation of the storyline. Gave your guy a couple extra weapons, guns, and moves. And, uh, again, I'm really going to focus on the, the survival mode that they um, included. So you and up another player um, fighting off hordes and waves of enemies, uh, which I'm pretty stoked about. I've only uh, been able to play it once. I haven't got too far in it, but uh, looking forward to getting uh, more of that done tonight and tomorrow because review goes up on Friday. <laughs> and... <laughs> So, uh, That's right. yeah, no, so, so far so good. Andrew's a cool taskmaster. Yeah, he's whipping me into shape. <laughs> I can't, I can't, uh, I can't goof around on Dark Souls anymore this week, so. Um, but yeah, no, I, I like it. It's available, uh, XBLA, uh, and PC. Is it on PSN? I can't remember. Yeah, it's on so. PSN, yeah. Yeah, PSN as well, so. About it's, how, uh, it's, how, I know you said you haven't played much, but about how far do you think you've gotten in it so far? Uh, the first chapter, basically, exactly. so not too far, but uh, slamming through it, all-nighters, ho. <laughs> I've read a couple but, things online, I'll be curious to see too, there's a few things I've heard here and there that uh, towards the end it gets pretty buggy, like almost you know, to the point of being unplayable. Um, yeah, so. I've, I've tried to stay away from, from stuff just because I like to be as objective as possible, but I, but I have heard um, some frame rate issues, which is weird with a game of that style. When it's yeah. all hand hand drawn and like that, it, th- those types of games, you know, you're not pushing tons of you know polygons. So yeah. uh, we'll see. I'll let you. I'll let you guys know. Uh, the other thing that I have been playing, which has been taking most of my time, um, I actually kind of it kind of took over Sunday for me. I I got up and it's uh, King Arthur, uh, the role playing war game, two. Um, <laughs> what a great title. Uh, the uh, yeah, I basically booked off Sunday to play this game because I knew I was going to be busy this week. But I've been able to play it, you know, sprinkled here. But yeah, I started at nine in the morning, and it was one of those games where you're like, oh, it's six at night, so I guess I guess I should brush my teeth or something. I don't know. Like I look down, I'm sitting in sweatpants, and but your wife might but appreciate was, that. Maybe not. Who knows? I don't know, but. But you know what? I was saving, you know, the land with my knights and my wizards. And, um, but yeah, I'll break it down for those people who haven't played King Arthur, the role-playing war game. Um, I played the first one a little bit. I wasn't too impressed with it. Um, basically, think of the Total War series mixed with um, sort of an, a more involved overview system where you do quests and you level up and have all the rpg stuff takes place on the over overworld screen which is it's not a it's not a risk board you actually have a character that you move throughout the land and they have um you take uh turns going throughout the land so if you think like heroes or something like that you have a certain amount of moves per season and so one season you go and attack say the picks in the north and the next season you go and you discover, you know, Merlin over in the south, and it's it's got awesome, awesome writing. And one of the first things I noticed about the game was that every single quest is narrated, and it's narrated really well. And that that definitely gets you 
immersed in in sort of the the whole you know wizards warriors and and king arthur theme um but the game really falls apart that not really falls apart but it doesn't do a great job in the battle so once you do move your character and you go and you fight a guy, say you're trying to take over his his duchy or his, you know, you're fighting the evil count to take over his duchy, but uh, and it goes into a battle Zooks. screen. Yeah, exactly. No, that's exactly what it's like while you're playing this. Do you but glove slap him? It, you like I challenge you to a duel. No, for your, it's for it's your all about swords. It's all about swords and spells and stuff. And um, but yeah, once you get into the battle, it the polish. You know, it does, there's not a lot of polish there. Uh, your guys, your armies charge at each other. You know, you do the tactics thing, yada, yada, yada. But when you get down into the nitty gritty of it and you have two armies fighting, they just kind of, like, ram into each other. <laughs> like, it's bad. It's two it's boulders like, and whichever boulder is bigger wins, right? No, no kidding. Like, I'm used to play. like, I've played all the Total War series and I, and I love that. I, I know that this isn't it, but I have to compare it to that because that's the battle, that's the battle yeah. system that they're yeah. using. But when you go in and you're like, your cavalry charges in on a bunch of archers because you made this wicked flank and all they do is just kind of bump into them and then you can... <laughs> s- no, and then you can see the numbers <laughs> ticking down. It's like, I guess I'm winning because the archer number is going down and yeah. it, that, it loses a little bit of the, you know... That's a shame. Uh, yeah. Because, so, I, I feel bad saying it, but I've actually started just doing auto battle for everything yeah. and playing, and, and which is like half of the game. But I really, really like the overworld stuff because you're playing an RPG yeah. and, and it's got really involved quests. And some of the quests are, you, you know, it, some of the quests don't even have a battle re- related to them. You'll go and you'll have to resolve some political debate and... You'll get faction, you know, you get plus 10 to the, this faction in the north, minus 10 to this, depending on what choices you make. And sometimes you'll come out with artifacts and gold, and it's all just text-based, and I really like that. So it's and, a role-playing game with RTS elements and a public debate forum? Yeah, <laughs> totally. No, it is, because you'll go and you're like, uh, a bunch of quests will pop up on your screen, and you can decide which ones to, to hit up. And the aim of the... Because it's got a full campaign, and and then you got the skirmishes, and I don't think it has multiplayer in it. I'll have to double-check. It might. Um, but yeah, I, I played, like, most of the campaign, and yeah, like, some some of the quests are just go talk to this dude and resolve, you know, the plague that has hit their land. And depending on the choices you make, you'll get, like, plus 10 gold here. Or if you, like, are an ass and you're like, I don't care about that province, let it die, you'll get minus 10 to that faction. And then that goes into how you want to sort of conquer the area because the the objective is obviously to take over the whole kingdom. But if you're not friends with, you know, if you're not friends with that one province in the north, they're not going to want to join you. So you're going to have to take them over by brute force. Whereas maybe you were, like, paying off guys in the south, yeah, sure, they'll become your allies. So I really, it's a really involved overworld overview, much more so than the Total War series, so it has a leg up on that. But once you get into the battles, it, it, it kind of breaks down and it's it's not too fun. You can you can use spells and, and there's, like, different tactical points in the battles, but I've, I've chose to ignore them after playing about, you know, a couple hours of them just because they don't feel good. They don't, yeah. they don't really feel good, which is, which is a shame because there is a lot of attention to detail. Uh, like I said, especially with that narrator in that uh, in that overview overworld, so yeah. it's it's really cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep playing and see what happens. You know, you can give different artifacts and say take one of your heroes and make you know marry him off to you know one of the other factions, and it's it's really cool. Um, I think it's I think it's around forty bucks. Um, I'll, I'll I'll throw in my thoughts in the review, but. I'll, I'll drop a hint here. Probably can wait for a sale on that one if you're a fan. Like this is this is for fans of of people who like those those strategy sort of war games like the Total War series. It is a nice diversion from that. But if you're looking for a great you know battle simulator, yeah, this is not it. This is absolutely not it. So we need to toss a review yeah. spoiler up on this one. That's right. But uh, that'll yeah that'll be out. Um, I'm thinking Monday get that one cranked out cool cool uh for beyond co-op uh and the last thing i've been playing for all week this has taken over my work day 
don't tell my boss, no, <laughs> um, is Hero Academy. It's by Robot Entertainment, same guys who did uh, Orcs Must Die. And it is a, it's a turn-based uh, strategy game on iOS. And <laughs> it's really cool. If you think of it as battle chess with random pieces and power-ups and equipment, that's what it breaks down to. Um, you have two factions on a small um, you know, tile set board. It's, it's tile-based. And you spawn in your, your guys, and there's, I believe, there's two factions that you can get. The game's free, by the way, which is awesome. Um, and it comes with the hu human faction. I think they're called the Council. And then if you want to get the Dark Elves faction, you got to pay a buck ninety-nine, which is fine. Ooh, that's, that's where okay. they always get you. Isn't <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> but it's it, free, but if you want to <laughs> play, you yeah. got to cough up. And, it, and it's well worth the buck ninety nine for that faction because it also gets rid of the annoying ads, which are just everywhere. So yeah. I was I, I happily gave them my toonie. That's two dollars for all you Americans out there. <laughs> <laughs> I learned something new. So tonight. you you gave yeah. them a toonie and not a loony, huh? It's speaking uh, Canadian with a lot. Two loonies. That's right. <laughs> and uh, no, and and you can have it's it's one of the best asynchronous multiplayer games where. I take a turn, then you, <laughs> then you take a turn, and then I and you can just play it throughout the day, which is great. And it'll just give you a notification saying it's your turn now. And you have um, you put your guys on the field, and you have six actions per turn. You, and an action is moving, attacking, equipping, or casting a spell. That's it. And the object of the game is to destroy the other guy's crystal. And tons of strategy for it, it, there's a lot of strategy packed into this little little board. So. I'm super impressed with it. It's called Hero Academy by Robot Entertainment. And it's got their, their art style, right? Where oh, it's so, I lo I love so classic. Like, super cartoony, lots of emotion, and lots of, like, it's pretty humorous. Um, so, yeah, like, when, when, a, when you win a battle or, like, defeat a guy, the other team will, like, stamp their feet on the ground or, like, throw <laughs> their arms up and stuff like that. Or, yeah. or, when, or when, like, a guy dies, he'll, like, hold his chest and just be like, Ugh! and, uh, <laughs> It's just it's it's really well done, and I, I highly recommend it. And you have no excuse but to download it because it's free, and you get you can play the whole game free. And you know I only spent the two bucks because I wanted to get rid of the ads, and I wanted to play it the, as the new race because I got sick of playing as just the humans. So and you wanted to say Toonie on the podcast. That's right, <laughs> and I want to and I really like Robot Entertainment. I like supporting those guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they they have uh, humans, dark elves, and they just announced today that a dwarf. Uh, Dwarven faction is coming on the twenty second. How much so is that going to cost you? Probably another two bucks, <laughs> Un unless I don't know. But I, we'll see. It doesn't matter to me. I'll, I'll gladly give them my money just because I've already played. You know, if you if you want to time it out, I'd say like six hours a day, but that's taking a turn. You know, every hour. So yeah, um, yeah, cool. loving that, loving that, absolutely loving that. Cool, Nick. What have you been playing? Uh, so I was digging deep in the backlog lately, and I had to finish up Deus Ex, uh, Human Revolution. I had played that around release, and then I got frustrated at one of the bosses. Um, Didn't you get frustrated like the very first boss? Wasn't it? Yeah, like... I, I think it was the first or the second one. Um, and what was funny is I, I picked it up around Christmas time again, and and tried to to beat him again, and I couldn't. I tried like you know I don't know half a dozen times, and I was like, yeah. you know what, screw this. So I picked it up again, and this was during when I was actually really sick this week, and uh, I was like, ah, I guess I'll try and see what happens, and I beat him the first freaking try. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which was like, it blew my mind because I hardly remembered the controls, I was just like trying to figure stuff out, I'm just running around, and I don't know. I beat him first try. Illness That's gives awesome. you power. The, the, the African so. virus is like your spider bite. So, so oh, I, wow. I went through and I played through that, and that was a pretty pretty solid game. Nice. Uh, I also picked up a game called Scorgasm on uh, Steam. Yeah, I saw you got that on Steam. How is it? It's pretty solid. So, you know, I'm making a twin stick shooter, so basically any twin stick shooter I see out there I've been picking up and trying to steal ideas from <laughs> compare. Can but, you put uh, the word gasm in your title now? I don't think it'll fit, but... Shargasm? It, yeah. <laughs> I like it. We're changing uh, the title. Um, at first, it, it kind of reminds me a bit of Mutant Storm. If you played the Xbox Live Arcade game, Mutant Storm. Uh, yep. oh, yeah. Except it's a little more over the top. Uh, it's a little more fast paced. And it has this, they call it melee attacks. Uh, but basically the right bumper does like a close range attack 
on guys. So if you get surrounded, you can kind of like um, defend yourself. But what's interesting is it builds the scoring into you use that to eat up the bullets that are being shot at you. And so if uh, you do that in quick succession and then also kill a bunch of guys, your multiplier goes up and it, it kind of builds on that whole thing. Uh, it's Cause it's, it, it's, it's a, you're a ship, right? Going around yeah, kind of like your ship. It's a fixed small area. Yeah. Like ship. geometry wars. Yeah. Even smaller. Like I said, it, okay. it, it's almost like uh, there was one on PSN to uh, you, you shatter. Like, no, you played as like, no, a mole- it was like, a, it was a molecule one. Um, oh shit. What was that? called? Uh, yeah. Uh, but it's kind of like yeah. that. It's that smaller okay. area. You're really confined, um, and a set number of guys and waves. It. But you know, long story short, it, it's it's got some potential. Uh, it says it's like an open world thing. But basically, what it does is you're playing on like a grid. So you play a level, you get it, and you get choices. You go up, right, down, or left, and and that's different difficulties. And you just keep going around and, and uh, solving the levels that way. Um, I've only played probably 45 minutes or an hour of it, uh, but the mechanics of it are real solid, and uh, you know I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm a sucker for twin stick shooters. So. <laughs> I think it's like it's like it's like 10 bucks, so it's pretty easy yeah, to swallow. Yeah, it was on swallow. it was on sale too. I think it was 20 percent off. So and I got it with nice. the soundtrack. I am always I'm a sucker for soundtracks too. Um, Those ones usually have really good ambient beats and stuff that yeah, you can play it, along it, too. It does. It has a lot of good music so far. So yeah, good. Um, Good week so, for soundtracks because they got the indie music bundle yeah, out now. I that. And the second one, yeah, yeah. The, uh, so what you got to do, Nick, is take the music, you know, take every best track from each twin stick shooter, and then put it in reverse, and then put that into your game. Yeah. And then, then you're then you're <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, actually, the music in my game is something I'm most proud of, and it's the thing I actually spent the most money on. I yeah. Mean, you know, got to. I know. <laughs> Yeah, Piano Cat is expensive these days. So. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined the surprise lock. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, but I, and also, so uh, still going to the backlog. Uh, I went back into Lord of the Rings: War of the North, which I only started playing. We had a co-op night, I think, like a month ago or so. Yeah. Um, so I started playing it then, uh, but now I went back into it. It's it's pretty solid. Uh, it it's got a ton of loot in it, like. There's almost too much, uh, you know. And, and that's got to be because you're playing on the 360, aren't you? Yeah. That's got to be hard to manage with a controller. They did not, you know, the interface is, is pretty decent, and they do a good job for you to like compare stuff, you know, and see if it's better or worse than what you have. But like the problem is, like, you go into a battle and you come out and you got like nine like shoulder pads <laughs> to choose from, and you're like, you know, and each one is like a point different. It does this and that, and. I don't know. It, it it's pretty decent, and uh, you know another thing I did while I was sick was watch all the Blu-rays, the extended editions. So yeah, you it, psyched. It, it, yeah, it, it kind of got me in the mood, so going in, going in and playing it again. Uh, Are you playing that co-op uh, or just I had, solo? I, I played a little bit co-op. I, I left it open a couple times, but I basically just been going solo because I've only been able to have time to play like a thirty-minute stint. So right, I don't right. Like piss someone off because I'm only in a game for thirty minutes. <laughs> no, that's no, that's fine. And what are you uh, playing as? Or can you, when you're playing solo, can you switch? Yeah, you, you can switch characters if you want. Uh, I, I'm playing mostly as the dwarf. I okay, knew it. Basher. I knew it. I just had this image in my head of like an ill Nick sitting there, like in his sweatpants, getting all excited and be like, "You have my axe." <laughs> exactly. Right there. And my beard. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like the dwarf characters, but yeah, you can switch between them at the end of the at the end of the levels. It asks you if you want to switch characters. The AI does a pretty good job. They'll even like uh, if they pick up uh, items that are for your character, they'll even send them to you. They'll gift them to you and stuff like that. Cool. Uh, and they they'll auto equip and you can you can mess around with it. So yeah, that's that's on the to get list for sure. Because I remember playing that back at packs and then i just haven't got a chance to, yeah, to get around it, to i've it. been looking i've been watching the prices because i have a friend that wanted to pick it up and it, it's been hovering around 30 dollars on amazon that's not so bad it's pretty decent so like 80 here yeah <laughs> 80, 80 in toonies 80 toonies. yeah yeah 40 toonies, 40 toonies that'll cost yeah, you yeah. <laughs> let me get out let me get out my coin sack for you <laughs> Jeez. so that's about it though uh nice just, just still programming away on xna you but, nerd. Yeah, I am. Uh. <laughs> no, that's good. I, I, am I allowed to talk about your game? It's sure. fun. Yeah, we can talk about it. 
I don't know. I, I played that, that build you sent me, and then it's it's cool, man. It's, yeah, it's getting there. You know, definitely, you know, of, of course it's an early build and needs polish, but yeah, frick, yeah it's yeah, it's like cool. Yeah, like a lot of the stuff we're, we're kind of concentrating on, like there's literally almost no AI at this point. Right, just yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, the AI <laughs> is go after one ship. Yeah, yeah. there's like, well, there's like three decisions. It's like, do I attack this guy? Do I attack the generator? Or, you know, do I go over here for a little bit? Like that's yeah. basically the AI, but... We've been doing, like, a lot of balance stuff, and, like, I've been doing, like, progressive difficulty and, and, like, power behind, like, each level and stuff like that. So, it's... The first four levels are pretty polished at this point now, and, and yep. pretty playable, so we'll see. Have you got how, have you got it fixed yet so that, you know, I can't cheese my way through, like, 20 swarms of guys with my shields up the whole time? Uh, yes and no. The thing is, we, <laughs> the, the levels have a lot more guys now, um, so... And you're, yeah, the, the salvage burns through a lot faster. Okay. Um, Very cool. That's that balance tweak. Yeah, the, it, it's, <laughs> it, you know, it's, I've probably played, you know, it, it's interesting because I've played it as much as I've worked on it, um, which Just is, which is difficult. Countless hours. Countless yeah. hours. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's what goes, it's, it's interesting to actually know someone who is actively working on a game just because... You know, you always hear about, oh, you know, they're working on a game. They're taking yeah. away, taking, taking away. Time, we're done it, with this. I, I, I keep mean... needing to do like more like development blog kind of things and talk about like what's been going on in my head and. But Don't do just... that, Nick. None of us well, are ready for that. Yeah, the world's <laughs> not ready for what's in my head. But by the time he's all done, he'll be like twenty pounds thinner. He'll just be this gaunt shell, <laughs> air patches falling I... out. <laughs> so you can you can get my game on Xbox. 720 indie games uh it's a dollar so you know it's bad though so like i've been looking through a lot of threads on the the forums there and stuff and there's ones that the guys list their sales numbers and stuff and this one guy he felt real bad for he's like you know i put it out he's like i had you know 850 trials the first day and one purchase and then he's like my first week it was like 8,000 trials and seven purchases or something like it was like oh, really man. really hard he's like he's like I'm trying not to put the gun in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> well, that... <laughs> you know? that's because he didn't actively market his game with development blogs that's yeah, where you maybe, got <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but it, it's... you gotta plant that bug early it's, it's definitely tough to judge like how well it'll do like some of the games are they have crazy conversion rates of like 50 percent you know and, and they're selling literally 20 30 thousand copies and then there's other ones they're like five percent and selling maybe two or three thousand yep. copies so well you're you know you're pretty well connected pull a couple strings when that happens yeah and well go from okay there, so, so here, here I'll, 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 i guess i could probably talk about it do you know who i am i'm um, ba you... penguin buy <laughs> my game so jason you played um the elf game right the elf squad right? yeah uh which was developed by one of the star doc developers so they actually marketed through it um, yeah you know and it got pretty decent coverage yeah uh, sales numbers in the hundreds for that game oh i do not wow. doubt it. i so, do not doubt it and uh you know he had said uh basically what he thought was you know it's a seasonal game kind of like you know that's probably a big part of it stuff like that um yeah, it was Christmas themed, seasonal, yeah. and very. Uh, so, I mean, for for a lot of those indie games, I don't know. I mean, just what I've noticed uh, from playing a bunch of them is there's a real kind of uh, balance for the tone and for for the gameplay difficulty. And while Elf Squad, for instance, had like a few different difficulty levels that you could go to, it was the same thing every single level. And that just, I mean, you know. You go through a seasonal game. You play through it once. You play through it with maybe you know your family or friends. Yeah. But that's it. And then on those trials, you get enough of a picture from the trial that you're like, ah, that was fun for a few minutes. Okay, moving yeah. on. So. Well, that, that that's a big discussion on there. Is you know, how do you do your trial? Like, what's the what's the good way? Do you you know where do you cut it off as demo thing? And it, and it's it's really really interesting because you don't have this big publisher trying to, to govern a hand of how this game is. You have, like, one guy or two guys talking about, you know, I've done four or five games and I did this and this and this and this one to see which would be better. Like, you know, there's there's people that are making a living doing the indie games, but they churn through. They do, like, one a month. Yeah, you know, that's they, crazy. They, they've got their process down, and so it's interesting, but, 
you know, all right, we dwelt on that enough. Jason, tell us what you're playing. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I've been almost nonstop in Kingdom, uh, Kingdoms of Amalur, Reckoning. It's, you know, to borrow off of the last co-opticast, Kingdoms of Amalur, Reckoning is my Skyrim. So if Skyrim is Mike's Dark Souls through <laughs> transitive properties, this is my Dark Souls. <laughs> oh, man. Um, nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm picking up what you're putting down. That's right. That's right. Because I got some more, so you better be ready. <laughs> okay. okay, bring it. All bring right, it. here we go. Tell me about glaives and shit. I will. Actually, they're called Fey Blades. Um, <laughs> Fey Oh, fuck. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> I'm already getting schooled. I was trying to get through that with a straight face, just couldn't do it. Um, it's it's good. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'll put up like the full Beyond Co-op review in our in our community blogs uh, about it. But uh, you know, they they tossed together this whole sort of superstar team of Ari Salvatore and um, uh, Todd McFarland to do the artwork, and then um, Ken Rawlson from he used to be from Bethesda to do like the whole gameplay. And it, you know, a large part of it feels like the Bethesda Scroll games and, and you know, the, the Elder Scroll games. Because it's a huge open world. I mean, Nick was asking me, so how much have you gotten done? I'm probably about 25 hours into it and I've done 18, 19 side quests and maybe three of the main quests. So, I mean, there's a ton of things to do. And I'm hardly even out of, like, the opening starting area, too. I mean, like, there's... Oh. You look at the world map and I'm sitting there thinking... I've gone to four out of the twenty areas so far. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I just I, I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. But um, the, I, the I, I have a prediction. You're going to get sick of the side quests <laughs> <laughs> very fast. What, but what do you have to do? What do you have to do in them? Do you go kill stuff? Do you go collect stuff? Is a typical RPG? It, it is very tropes? typical RPG, but it's also kind of MMO elements. So so some of the side quests are just straight fetch quests of hey run over here and you know. Um, gather up some herbs for me and bring them back Great. awesome gather six cat teeth that's right <laughs> um but ma most of them are kind of have their own little story base so the one i just wrapped up tonight there's faction quests and so the big sort of world that it's set in is there's mortals and then there's the fey fairies and the f uh, the fey fairies are immortal so they you can kill them but then they come back to life basically and mortals don't have that same luxury they just you know oh. Okay. Um, so, so you can do some of these faction quests kind of along the way, and uh, one of the faction quests I just wrapped up was for the for the <laughs> summer fay. They're divided into winter and summer, and it was a really good quest line because it's all about sort of how they tell their history through stories. So you reenact these stories as you do the quest line. So it was an interesting kind of little way to implement these and you know it's still the same rpg trappings of run over here kill some dude but the story behind it was a little bit more that kept you going and stringing you along to the next one um and that's you know again you talked about king Ar uh, king arthur 2 it's 9 a.m and all of a sudden oh, it's 6 p.m i should probably brush my teeth or do something <laughs> put pants on put some pants yeah. on but it, it's right. it's the same. I mean, it's with this is is you start on some of these side quests, and it's just like okay, well, just I'll I'll just go over here next, and just see what they. Okay, I'm just gonna go over here next, and then I'm sure it'll be okay. Well, now I'm just gonna go over here, and they make it so easy because from the get go, you can fast travel anywhere. Like you bring up the world map, okay. and you can just fast travel to any location that you've discovered. So you don't have to wait for some magical point or anything like that. It's you know you discover a location, you can fast travel to there. The biggest gripe about the game is, essentially, I mean, they they don't do the standard sort of Western RPG of you sit there with sword and shield or whatever and, you know, parry block in the uh, first person style. It's very much an action, um, you know, uh, yep. sort of combat, which is good, but it's just that bit off. I mean, I know, like, for a lot of reviews I've read, of, for instance, like Dark Souls is, you know, criticisms and like of it is that you have to sort of be dodging or blocking a little bit you know before the enemy attacks so you have to do that some of that anticipation yeah so it's got a little bit of that which you know I, I'm fine with but it's the attacks themselves and your special special abilities so like on the ps3 you hold down the r1 and you have a little special abilities wheel that pops up so you can do magic or whatever the case may be 
Well, you bring up R1 and you're trying to fire something off real quick, but it just does your normal attack because there's just that little bit of a delay between it registering you have the R1 held and enabling that special ability. So their whole combo chain system starts falling apart when you really need it to be working because you know you're surrounded by a bunch of enemies and so you got one juggled and you want to you know turn your attention to the guy behind you but it just doesn't quite move fast enough so my biggest comment on it it's a really good game it'd be a great game with a patch i mean like i feel like it's one of those cases they could tweak some of this stuff in a patch make it a lot better small things i mean like with their inventory um it's not quite so bad that you you know you get out of a battle and you have like 20 shoulder pads but (laughs) You have, you know, a lot of loot um, that drops around you and that you find in chests. And they have a nice little thing where you can just, you know, go through and you can quickly send it to a junk list so that when you show up to a vendor, you just say, sell everything in my junk pile. Nice. But they need to make it navigating through the inventory a little bit better because right now you're just doing, like, single scrolling down. And when you start stacking up all those items, you know, you need to have, like, a a page scroll or something like that to jump to it, so. Right. Now... That with with all the side quests and, and you're 25 hours in and, and not that far into the game, it sounds like, do you think it loses some focus in being that expansive? Or is that part of the charm, like, I guess, Skyrim, where you're like, oh shit, I'll just travel over here and wander off and see what I find? Yeah, I mean, it, it falls more into that of, of with Skyrim and, and a lot of the other Western RPGs is I'm just going to wander over here and see what's up. And I see, you know... It, it follows kind of like the same with the world of Warcraft. So, like, on your mini-map, you can see yellow exclamation marks for where there's, you know, quest Stuff. givers. So you're just yeah. like, oh, there's a quest giver. I wonder what they're up to. So you just kind of wander over there, and you see what's going on. And five, ten hours later, you eventually start wandering back to the main quest line. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's 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 it does have that little bit of lack of focus, uh, you know, as a lot of Western RPGs do in that sense. And I would say that if it weren't for some of the way that they tell the story and they kind of get you involved with those side quests, yeah, I mean you're right. I, I'd probably burn out of the side quests pretty quick. But they've done, a, you know, they've done a pretty good job of building up that world. That I kind of care a little bit more about the world right now than I do about right. the main quest Be- line and you know what my character is doing. And the, the other interesting thing is they actually reward you. I mean, aside from just you know experience and all that stuff, they actually reward you for some of those things. So when I wrapped up that faction quest um i got you know what they're called twists of fate and they're these permanent ability boosts so you know when you complete certain quest lines and depending on how you complete them because they sort of let you choose um you get new abilities or you get you know enhancements to your already active abilities and stuff like that which is a great way to kind of i think keep it interesting and keep you going on a lot of those side quests so now now what what make would make you play this over Skyrim and Dark Souls? What is it doing differently? Like why? Like why should I care about this game? I think it's I mean as, despite the fact that it's the um that the needs that tweak, it's the action, like the way that the combat plays out, it feels really good. I mean when it when you do kind of get it down and it's working the way it's supposed to, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you go into a combat and you just start, you know, you go through and you do a combo and one guy like, my guy's a rogue slash spellcaster, so I'll combo one guy, toss something on him that, you know, sort of sets him on fire, and I'll go then right. start attacking another guy, and then I can trigger that fire to explode the enemy and damage enemies around him. So it's, you know, I do a combo, set him up, teleport over here, start attacking another guy. When that enemy I was attacking gets close enough to another group, I detonate him. He does damage to all the enemies around him, and then I can start, t- you know, attacking the other thing. So they do... Those little things they do, you know, when it works, when they, when it, you know, doesn't have those delays, mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun, and that's just it. Is like if if they tweak that, if they fix that, it'd be a really great game to play. Yeah, that sounds like a, a patch fix with, for the, the that delay in action would would really, you know, kind of solidify it because by the sounds of it, yeah, it sounds like some some pretty good advanced combat, you know. A little bit better than Darksiders and, and not as janky as, say, Dark Souls, but, uh, or not janky, but, you, I don't know. Have you played Dark Souls? You know how it is, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, and that's what it is. Like, with their dodging and parrying system, it's the same kind of deal as you kind of, you gotta be a little bit anticipatory. You can't react when you see the enemy attacking you. You kind of be like, okay, they have, like, a little bit of a build up, and that's when you move. 
Right. So, yeah. Oh. But it's good. And the other thing is uh, they have uh, story stones. They're called lore stones. And they also reward you for finding those. So when you find all in a set, they give you, um, you know, boosts from finding those. So, you know, they'll increase your damage with certain weapons or against certain enemies. So they kind of, you know, reward you in that way, too. They do quite a bit to kind of keep you going through it. Nice. So. Nice. All right, so talked a lot about what we've been playing. Let's talk about some of what's in the news this week. Uh, starting off with probably what's you know anticipated game of the year for a few folks. Uh, Borderlands Two came out this uh, uh, week with an interview with their developer talking about uh, what they're looking at for the next one in the game. Some interesting stuff from that uh, was. They're going to increase basically their uh, online co-op capabilities by allowing you to do split screen and online at the same time. Something I know, you know, our audience is always a fan of. Uh, I thought what was interesting in the interview though was was the way he, the uh, uh, producer, the designer there, kind of handled some of those questions about asking, you know, well, what about the loot or XP or are you going to do anything co-op focused? And you know, to their understandable they said well no i mean you know this game has to be played single player 100 percent. so we can't have any sort of hey come over here and lift this rock for me while i you know do <laughs> shoot this else. dude in the face yeah. yeah um but at the same time i mean you know there's plenty of games <laughs> where they do have those elements that you know it's it's secret areas it's like more to kind of be able to do with a buddy that i would think would be good for them to do i don't know what do you guys think you know, Borderlands is a game that is way more fun with friends. Like, it is infinitely more fun. And I and I totally understand that you got to be able to play through it single player. Um, but even, you know, its strength doesn't come from sort of... I, I wouldn't say its strength doesn't come from co-op specific tasks. Um, I think its strength comes from the difficulty and, you know, having players that act different roles and, and just the sheer amount of guys coming at you you need more people because it scales up with each player and and you know if it if they threw in stuff in that world like yeah hold up this midget while i solve this puzzle or you know to lure out you know cromerax um that might feel a little forced uh, but yeah the co-op strength just comes from being able to explore that world as this you know party that you know you, you're not you don't feel as alone in that desolate world there yeah I, I think you can you can put something in that's like entices people to play co-op without breaking the single player you know and, and i think that's what you want to do especially in a game like that where you know it is meant for co-op yeah so, you know put put some stuff in there that yeah maybe it is only accessible in, in, in co-op so people will at least give it a shot and one uh, one thing I didn't even touch in Borderlands 1 was the arena battles. Yeah. And, you know, that was their sort of multiplayer-focused thing. And, I don't know, yeah, like, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think anyone touched them. Yeah. So, like, yeah. switch that up. Yeah. But The other news that came out um, for release this week that was kind of sad was news about Twisted Metal, their uh, online co-op mode. Yeah. Yeah, completely dropped. Completely dropped. And David Jaffe, in some rather confusing tweets of his, clarified it, clarified it, <laughs> that there's two-player split-screen online, but there's only two-player split-screen campaign. I mean, what he meant by Local. that was, if you want to go yeah. online and play against other people... You and a buddy sitting on the couch can do that from one PlayStation, provided that you guys both have your own PlayStation IDs. But if you want to get online and play through the entire campaign with a friend, that is gone. You can only do that in couch co-op. Yeah, big thumbs down there. Yeah, I know I was talking to Andrew about this because he's doing the review, and he, we're like, yeah, okay, we'll grab it. I'll do the campaign with you. And then he got it today, and we were talking. He's like, oh, just a heads up. Yeah, we can't play the campaign anymore. So I, that's a super disappointing because yeah. it, it was definitely a thing that I was looking forward to, and a lot of it because you know we you know Twisted Metal, you blow up cars, but 
there's a ton of new stuff in this one with the different game modes and different characters, so it would have been cool to explore that with another party. And the Twisted Metal games to me always, I mean, have had interesting story. Not necessarily like the greatest story of times, but they've always had a really interesting story, particularly back in Twisted Metal 2 and Twisted Metal Black, I think, had some of the yeah. more interesting takes on things. And Definitely. playing through those with a friend made it sort of, you know, that much easier, that much better, because you really wanted to see, all right, just how is this all resolved? So having someone there to kind of help you blow everything up and get through the, some of those tough points. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you weren't too disappointed, though, Locke. You were just like, all right, back to Dark Souls. <laughs> oh, come on. No, back to Shank, because I've got lots of work to do. <laughs> no, I was looking forward to Twisted Metal. I've been, I've been on that train since I, since I played it a couple, uh, a while back now, and, uh, I, I really like that franchise, and yeah. you know, it's just yeah, it's too bad that they couldn't include that because I don't think I can get, you know, my wife's not going to play online or going to play campaign co-op with me. <laughs> so, oh well. Oh well. Another one bites the dust, I guess. Sadly, yeah. Um, potentially, some news from last week. Uh, there could be another Battlefront game on the horizon. Looks like based off of some job listings and a bunch of other sort of rumors here and there that they could be coming out with a Battlefront 3. I'll be honest, I never played any of the Battlefront games, so this was just kind of another news story to me, but I don't know, you guys play any of them? <laughs> yeah, I, I've played uh, the previous ones. And they're definitely pretty addictive, and just because <laughs> there's such a variety of combat options and stuff in it. I seem to remember like a rumor or some content like a year ago coming out from like some Battlefront three, like concept yeah. art and like some video footage and stuff. I, I'm pretty sure we covered it because Jim was Jim was all about Battlefront. Yeah, um, yeah. Was. I, I remember, I remember playing this in university, and yeah, you you. The cool thing about it, Jason, is that you play as the grunt. You are the foot soldier down in the battle, and you start out and you the, the the map is just planets of the galaxy and you pick which planet you want to go to and there's a ton of different environments like uh, I forget probably like well there's Dagobah ten, there's Tatooine there's, there's yeah Hoth. there's so, <laughs> there's so many different uh, you know different areas you can take <laughs> over and I, I remember just you know getting with a buddy and we'd play this and we'd go through the whole conquer the whole galaxy in a night and super addictive so I'd be I'd be super curious to see what they can do with you know the more better online connectivity of this generation as well as you know making it look nice and and just the scale of the battles could could really be something so yeah definitely interested and i i totally forgot that i i remember those rumors nick about something yeah. popping up but i i totally forgot about it but star wars right yeah <laughs> Anything to wash out the bad taste from those first three movies and then the Clone Wars movie? Well, yeah, there's a lot oh. of things. Yeah, this is one of the better parts of the Star Wars franchise, let me tell you. <laughs> um, so Resident Evil 6 uh, was released, not you know, announcement of that being released not too long ago, and looking for some more details and got a little bit more this week. Apparently, uh, you know, based off the... Uh, trailer, it is Chris Redfield and Leon Kennedy who are going to be returning as well as Helena Harper and some guy who's just, you know, going to save the world and kind of a <laughs> dusty, <laughs> reluctant tone. I guess I could do it on a Tuesday because I'm free between 3 and 4 p.m. <laughs> but uh, looks like this time I called it on the last one and I said, okay, well, Chris Redfield goes to China now and kills a bunch of people over there. <laughs> That seems to be the new setting. Um, is that is that really where it is? It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, you know, lots of jokes going to be coming out of that about Chris Redfield continuing his genocide, but, you know. Chris hey. Redfield is a racist. I, I like that they uh, they highlighted that, uh, you know, the, the new control scheme and uh, that you can move and shoot at the same time as, like, oh. as, as a feature. So no more tank controls. Moving and shooting. Thank you, Dead Space. Oh man. No, <laughs> no I, I I'll be honest with you guys. I, I'm I don't I could care less about Resident Evil Six. I'm I'm waiting for Raccoon City, man. I wanna get in on that. 
It's looking better and better. Yeah, like, it, it, I remember when you covered it first, it was like, uh, okay, another Re Resident Evil spin-off. But, you know, lately with the stuff that's been coming out, it's it's looking tasty. So. And that's next month, isn't it? March? Yeah, it's like middle of March, March yeah, 20th nice. or something. Yeah, nice. so... And I gotta ask too, Nick, for the uh, story there. Did you intentionally choose that screen cap to use for the story? Because in the news story itself, it mentions how zombies can run and jump, and we get this nice little <laughs> screen cap of the dude going like, "Whoa, yeah, hey, I'm jumping." <laughs> He's like, "I got some ballet moves." Bad ups for the undead. <laughs> you guys, you guys have been killing it with the screen cap posts, like that review of uh, I think the Mike burning did children. The, the burning <laughs> children. <laughs> what? Wasn't that the best thing, like, on the internet that day? Like, that was so good. Yeah, happy was, Action Fun Theater. Fun. Children on yeah, fire. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's that's where we really shine, is in our, our, you know, picture thumbnails at the top, our header images. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Speaking of uh, thumbnails and header images, um, Sanctum 2 has been announced. It's coming out. And, um, you know, I, I know the first one, Tally really liked that. She played it. I don't know if, Nick, you played any of that. I played a little bit of it. You know who, who actually was really addicted to it on her staff is Mark. Oh, and really? Put hours and hours and hours into it, yeah. I own this, but I did not even give it the time of day, to be honest. It, it was I, okay. Uh, I mean, it mixes, you know, this is tower defense and FPS stuff. And okay. It's got okay. co-op. It's okay. It's okay. I think uh, I think the sequel is going to be one of those ones where the sequel actually is truly better. Or you know, okay. it, it took the time to kind of incubate their ideas and see what the world does with it, and then going from proof of concept to, to something yeah. worth yeah, looking at. So. So. Right on. So you're saying um, Skylander Sanctum Two and Mark would just be lost to the world? Yeah, you buy your your. We're, your... we're giving Mark a big head. He had said to me today. He he was listening to the last podcast. He's like, "You guys mentioned me on two podcasts in a row. You really love me." <laughs> now, so now it's three in a row. And he's just, Cut, you know, cutting this part out. Yeah, no. cutting this whole story out. You know, but... Maybe we should just bring Mark on instead of that guy. Yeah. We're... Hey. The, the cat wrangler. The cat wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't even just put his cat in front of the I, camera. You know, I'm sad like... that we lost that footage from that particular co-opted <laughs> cast. That, that would have been great. Yeah, uh, I know. All Come right. Up. Anything else from the news you guys saw want to mention? I don't think so. Oh, that was a lot. In here. One quick thing in passing I saw from Gama Sutra today. Apparently, uh, you know, we, we've been kind of talking about some too. Raymond Origins, fun game. You should check it out. According to Ubisoft, it was profitable for them, so, you know. Well, they've nice. been aggressive with the pricing on it. A lot of price drops here and there. And it might, you know, a lot of times people think that's a retailer initiated thing, but sometimes it does come from a publisher. So, the publisher drops price to spur sales. It's, I think it hovered around 30 to 40 bucks for a good chunk and of its life. It's so. a great price for it, 30 or 40. It's an amazing game. Yeah. So, hopefully with that, I mean, they said, you know, since it's something profitable, they could be doing more of those in the future, which cool. I think we'd all be happy about. Yeah, that'd That's be cool. sweet. So, turning to our community and looking at some of our community blogs, um, you know, one of the things that they've been looking at f for uh, the next CCV is uh, anticipated games of 2012. We did our co op cast uh, two back of what the co-op games of 2012 are. And hearing some from a few of the folks that posted there, uh, one that I kind of caught my eye was from uh, Big Bad Bob One Thirteen, talking about of xenomorphs and men. Of course, you're... <laughs> yeah, I like that. Of course, referring like to aliens, colonial marines, which sadly, as we talked about last time, has been delayed. But um, you know, a little interesting news post about what he's looking forward to being a huge fan not only of the uh, publisher Gearbox and Borderlands, but also just of those movies, you know, themselves. Um, which I think for uh, myself, I can totally agree with. I, I mean, it was a while until I saw those, but once I did, I was completely hooked and was really sad about the way those things kind of petered out. But you know, rebooting it. Coming out with the uh, prequel soon. Um, also in the CUNY blog section, something that uh, we tried to get to last time, just didn't have the chance to though, but uh, Secret Asian Mans with a Z talking about... Mans. 
how do you keep co-op fresh? And I thought this was, you know, kind of an interesting topic in general to, to bring up. I mean, he mentions sort of in the, in the post itself how you play through some games and, you know, you get, you get through the main storyline with a friend and it's just kind of like, okay, so now what? I mean, what else is there? How can uh, things be changed up a bit? He mentions a few other games in, like uh, Flotilla, an, an indie game where uh, basically you know players have to work at the same time with their actions during a turn. Um, oh. Talked about you know things like uh, Portal Two and Explosion Man to do some of that co-op action puzzle as a way to kind of keep gameplay fresh. But uh, what do you guys think? I mean, what are some good examples you have of uh, co-op games that Portal kept you going? Is actually one of the worst examples of keeping co-op fresh because you play through it once. And then that's screwed. it you're done yeah, yeah. You, 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 play, if you, you can't play through it again with someone else because you know all the solutions yeah so it's kind of you know I, I think in terms of keeping co-op fresh we you know we talked about borderlands earlier it's it's all about uh you know giving incentives to all the players involved uh regardless of whether you beat it or not and you know whether that's weapons items loot uh you know, customizing your character, any of that kind of stuff keeps people coming back. Uh, you look at even, you know, some of the bad examples are like the Fab Fable 2 and Fable 3. Uh, you know, Fable 2 especially where you're basically, uh, you know, uh, just tagging along and you didn't get the stuff. Um, the quest pr progression back to your character, but the incentive to keep playing with someone was that you did get money. Um, right from it so, so it did have some incentive there to for you to go and jump into other games and yeah and, and vice versa and i think uh, you know that's that's how you keep co-op fresh I, I don't think you can change the content so much as you can change what's i guess in the content i, I don't know what's the way, what's the way to say it? Oh. changing the game's core content but you're, yeah you're uh, changing I, the player's content i what i really like is when you can play the actual game and what I mean by that, with in co-op, what I mean by that is um, The Darkness 2. That just came out. It's a good example I can use. They have the sort of side missions and stuff. Like, that's good and well and all, but I would really like to go through that. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, games like Left 4 Dead, which don't exactly have a storyline, work a lot better. Whereas The Darkness is story-driven, linear, doesn't, you know, maybe balance issues if you have, like, four dudes with four arms that's not going to work yeah. at all but um one game that came to mind was um that we all i think tried recently was syndicate demo where they almost force you to to play co-op because otherwise you're going to get screwed and yeah. everyone yeah. you know you, you got to have a you know a bruiser you got to have a sniper everyone you know you have to have a hacker medic and so on and so forth and it's almost like forcing you into these mmo roles and I think that's one way of, of doing it, splitting it up so you just don't have this one, you know, if you're playing single player, it, you're going to have a hard time. And, and I think Syndicate, just in the, you know, in its history is a squad-based game. So, of course, that is a great way to, you know, split it up and say, okay, you're going to be the, the PsyOps guy, you're going to be Sniper, we need to do well on this and communicate well so yeah. almost forcing forcing the player to you know find people to play with and, and in order to get past the game so well and i thought it was interesting too about that was i mean they they while they do put people you're right they put people in those kind of roles they also sort of force you to everyone has to be a medic everyone has to do like some of those basic yeah. themes with the, with the team that's not you know, it's it's forcing you out of the usual first-person shooter mentality of I just get all the kills and I'll carry the team that way. It's no, you really have to work as a team. You really have to yeah. heal your teammates, and you know you can't go it alone. And you're right. I mean, bringing in those kind of MMO sort of qualities to it. Um, and, and yeah, Brink Brink tried to do it a little bit with the the sort of quest go help here while other people are doing another thing, but they didn't pull it off all that well. Mostly because the the multiplayer was a mess, anyways. But they they tried to do it, and that was kind of it was a re the right idea. And I think you know being able to reward people for uh, acting, you know, on the you know acting on the group mentality in a positive way. You know, whether so you don't you know you're always going to have your lone wolf gunmen, and if they want to do their thing, whatever. But rewarding the people who actually want to work together and work because that works better usually in those 
you know, those settings, especially when you're shooting dudes, because, yeah, you're going to get shot and taken down. You need to get healed by your buddy. Why not reward the person that does that instead of the guy who charges ahead and takes, yeah. you know, takes out the rest of the team? Cause Absolutely. What, what fun is that if, if one guy's doing all the work up front and the three back are kind of missing out on it? Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting. I mean, for me, the, the and I haven't played in a while, but Left for Dead to me was always a way to keep co-op fresh because of the way they implemented each level. I mean, you knew the basic level design, but because of the whole AI director and they changed, you know, when certain mobs appeared and, and when they had the, the hordes, I mean, that was to me, and I've talked about this a couple of different ways, but that was storytelling to me. Like, the story was... What did you and your group of friends do to get out of that situation? And yeah. everybody's got a story for that. I mean, like, anybody who's played that game, they've got a story. And I think that was one of the best aspects of that game that, you know, I'd love to see more games do is it really keeps it fresh. Because, yeah, you got this great story of, oh, man, I was with Locke and Nick. And Nick went down and, you know, I grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and pulled him back up again. And then Locke shot me in the face. And that wasn't cool, but we still made it to the end. And... <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. everyone's got those stories. And I have a different one entirely for when I go play with a different group of friends. So it never feels yeah. the same. Um, so, yeah, something cool to check out and, and think about of how they keep it fresh. Um, cool. And, and obviously, too, uh, you know, we're always looking for other things like that to discuss on these podcasts. So do use those user blogs. Put stuff up there about your thoughts and things that you, uh, you know, think yeah, are we, interesting we, we and discuss. We good uh, user blog posts. Lately, I've been pretty happy. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, lots of discussion yeah. going on there, so good stuff. Yeah, everyone keep posting. Thank you. Yeah. So that kind of takes us into you know sort of our more discussion topic, and uh, we got a little bit of a uh, interesting side note there with uh, Nick talking about indie game development. Uh, but what we wanted to kind of bring up this time around actually also came from one of our user blogs. Uh, this one comes from. Macrocephalus, who talked about how he, well, we'll just say he says he wasn't too smart. Um, the PlayStation Vita edition, um, and basically he goes into a post about how he went to this uh, event uh, to, you know, stand outside, wait in line for a long time to potentially win a free Vita, but then also get some hands-on time with it as well. And so he posts a lot of his impressions about it, and you know, some of what he's thinking for how the uh, touchscreen on the back sort of works in casual gaming. Um, pretty long sort of uh, post from, from some thoughts there that is uh, worth reading, but Nick, I know uh, you've been fortunate enough to get your hands on one, and I think minutes before the podcast went live, it finally stopped updating so that maybe you got <laughs> two seconds worth of gaming in, but uh, I'm going to yeah. turn this over to you. All right, so let's see. What can we talk about that? You know, we could do, this would be cool. Let's just Whoa. let's see the damn thing. <laughs> Hold on, let's do this. So let's all just grab. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> see how well this comes into focus. Trying maybe. That works. Can you guys see it? All right. Yeah. yeah dungeon good. Dungeon Hunter Alliance loading. So it's install. It's installing that now. So I just I had downloaded okay. that. Um, so yeah. So big thing about this. All the you know all the titles are going to be available. Um, portable or uh, in stores and online. So I just picked up Dungeon Hunter Alliance, and we got some Lumina's action going on. So here's the first thing I don't like: you can't use the pass and navigate this interface. You have to use the touch oh, screen, boo. which is kind of annoying. But <clears throat> um, but let's talk about specific co-op things and like why this has potential for co-op. And I'll show you this little thing here called Near. And Nier is basically Sony's answer to Foursquare. Uh, it's Foursquare for gaming. And basically what you can do is you can find people near you uh, and see what they're doing and, and, and potentially meet up and game together and stuff. So uh, How near? <laughs> uh, well, watch. I'll show you. So, okay. Uh, if you just tap this button to check in, and I've, since I've, I've already checked in at home, there's kind of no point, but you kind of click this discoveries thing. And it says, let's see who uh, we, we found by me. I, there's one person it found, actually, that has this. So, hold on. Let me see if I can figure out how to bring this up again. Out and about. Oot and about. About. All right. So, it found someone else that's played. I had played Hot Shots Golf. So, it actually found someone else that played Hot Shots Golf. 
And so it's saying, all right, here it is. So, so this person is in Stalker Town, which is about two miles away from me. And you can see okay. it actually kind of, it's showing you a little a little radius thing. <laughs> this is kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Nick, I'm a little bit creeped out by this right now. Here's so, this person. Ob- Zoom in, this and is... this is them playing right now. <laughs> obviously, all this stuff is optional. Uh, you know, you can you don't have to. You can just list it, just be your friends, or, you know, approve people to see. I figured I'd keep it open now because not a lot of people are going to have this. And, and, yeah. But uh, you can kind of see uh, what else they have, you know, their play history. And, you know, so you kind of have the potential to, to meet up and uh, get more co-op stuff going. You know, when, when more stuff comes out that does support co-op play. Um, I think, you know, it's, this is kind of in, it, in its infancy here, but there's there's definitely some potential. Okay, uh, okay. So, but the big thing, you know, along with that is, uh, you can kind of see what I just did there, tap the home button, is everything stays running for you. So here's the PlayStation Store I was looking at. Here's a list of kind of things that were going on. Uh, this is like, uh, if you have an Android phone, uh, like the task. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, wait there's a, a sec. There's a trophy you have there that you need to explain. What's that? The, the trophy think... there, you need to explain. Oh, you like that. <laughs> okay, so this is from Uncharted. And if you play with the the back panel on it, it gives you a yep a little bit of this stuff. Oh yeah, uh, it gives you the touch my rear trophy. I thought that was I thought that was a trophy for that near game you just no, had. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, hey, you want to meet up? Because I need this trophy. Because uh, called touch my rear. So there you go. I don't know. It's kind of tough to tell if it's focused or not, but that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, the trophies are are separate. You can see at the top here it has PlayStation Network and Vita, um, so it seems like all the games are going to support trophies as well. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, so pretty, pretty, some pretty cool stuff so far. Uh, this is kind of the the task manager. You can kind of see everything that's running. You can jump jump between stuff. Uh, and now, do you jump? Is like each different screen something like? Like at the top there, those icons, is that sort of the main things that are right, uh, running? Those yeah. little bubbles? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, you can see this up here in the middle is, yeah. is kind of what's running right now. So, I actually got quite a bit of stuff going on. I was going to say, um, so it looked yeah. like it, it just paused where you're at there and uncharted, and you just brought it up and started playing yeah. again. And so, you can clo- you close the stuff by doing this little like page peel thing and kind of close okay. reactive thing. That's um, cool. But, yeah, it pauses, and it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Whoa. It's uh, you know, it's pretty quick, and it the screen is gorgeous. I mean, I, I know this, you know, grainy internet feed doesn't do it justice, but <laughs> no, um, it's it's definitely PlayStation Three quality graphics in a handheld. It, that I is mean, the most so, beautiful grainy quality screen I've ever seen. <laughs> so when does the Dark Souls title hit that? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you don't yeah, need uh, any more. So, so no. I think you know, in terms of, of whether you know how viable this will be as a co-op platform, I think a couple things that they did in terms of you're always connected, you know, you always have access to your friends list and what's going on, kind of a thing. I think that's really going to help, and, and having more games support online co-op and stuff uh, should really help it. Is does it allow connectivity between so Dungeon Hunter Alliance? Um, <laughs> if I hop on my PS3. And you're on your Vita, can we play together? I don't know if that one does. Uh, Wipeout for this, you can play multiplayer with the people on the, the PSN version of Wipeout. I do know oh, that. Uh, there is that uh, Warriors Lair game that's coming out that's going to have the cross-platform play support. Um, you know, It kind of surprised me that handhelds don't have more co-op because they're, they're kind of almost... You play them mostly in social settings, right? You're on a bus or a train or on a plane. Like, you're, you're, you're usually... You know, in a place where uh, you're the opposite of your couch. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's it's gaming on the go, so there's other people around you more times than not. So the the incentive would be to, to play something together somehow. Or you know, so I think that near things a good start. Uh, it, you know, maybe it breaks the ice a little bit. And uh, but yeah, that's that's cool. Definitely potential is there. Yeah, and so this is you know this is the Wi-Fi and the 3G model, and it seems to kind of switch between them pretty seamlessly. So you know you can get those notifications constantly, and you know you are always on and connected and nice, uh, ready to go. So cool. But yeah, I've only I've only had like an hour really to kind of play with it and you know see what's going on there, but it's got some potential for sure. Cool. 
looks slick. So definitely more to expect from that, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, so we'll have the full review of that up uh, at the on the official launch, the other official launch, uh, which is 22nd next Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Something like that. Uh, Sweet. Yeah. So. Very cool. Nice. Well, gentlemen, as always, it's been a pleasure. And uh, as a reminder to all of our listeners out there, of course, uh, we got the Windows Phone 7 uh, app out there for Co-Optimus where you can pick up, uh, check out the site through there, the Android app as well. The iPhone app is... It's coming. It really is. I actually, I don't have it next to me, but I got the test build. Um, so oh, we're, nice. We're getting very, very close. Um, the, uh, the guy that's working on it actually said probably within a week or two. At this Whoa. Point. Wow. Okay. <laughs> By the so, time the next co-op cast rolls out, hopefully. Yeah, that would be awesome. That'd be sweet. Um, of course, <laughs> uh, we got shirts up on Split Reason. Uh, check them out there. Uh, as you heard from the last one, we're all out of one of them. But uh, revolution. Yeah. Yes. The Co-Optimus Revolution. <coughs> Leave feedback for us on iTunes. Follow us, of course, on Twitter. At uh, Co-Optimus is our account, and you know, shoot us line uh, through there through the forums or uh, leave a voicemail 646-926-6748 gentlemen it's been a pleasure and so join me as always above me I have nobody Locke no that's me Locke is above I'm here. me hi hi <laughs> <laughs> touch my rear <laughs> yes to my left I have the indomitable that's you. No, me. Hi. You're over there. I'm somewhere. Nick. This is so confusing. <laughs> I'll make it work. Nick Paleo. And then, of course, <laughs> unfortunately, not here this week, that guy. That guy. Mike Cat's afraid. Unfortunately. <laughs> Whichever way you want to take it. All right, folks. Take care. Have a great week. This is Co-Opticast. Play nice together. <laughs>